A C student can justify anything. And the worst part about it, they can believe the excuse. Don't look at me like that. Some of you guys have been defeated already in your life. You're saying to yourself, you know what? I got a GED. Nobody wants me. I used to be an alcoholic. Nobody wants me. My own father used to tell me I was no good. Nobody wants me. I'll just work this little dead-end job and we'll figure out what's next because I don't have anywhere to go. Some of you guys can relate to what I'm saying. Somehow, some way, you've disqualified yourself. I work with so many people and I can relate to them. Nobody can beat you but you. Nobody can stop you but you. But the worst thing you can do is disqualify yourself. Now I'm 50 years old. I got a wife. I got kids. I got mortgages. I got bills. School is over. That's all about the real deal right now. You guys with me? Is there any excuse for an adult not to get an A out of life? So when you go to work, is there any excuse for you not to be an A manager? Is there any excuse for your store not to be an A store? Is there any excuse for you to go home and not to be an A husband? Is there any excuse for you not to be an A wife or a mom or a dad? Is there any excuse? because we're not in middle school anymore, we're not in high school anymore. So on report card day, I came home and I would sit down with my mom and dad and I would make excuses about my seat. Well, mom, you know, I don't like to teach you, mom, and the teacher doesn't like me. That's why she gave me a seat. You know, my mom would say, that teacher didn't give you nothing, you earned it. Nobody can stop you but you. You know, I had a goal of playing in the NBA and I got there. You guys know I had a goal of doubling my NBA income and I got there. If you set a goal and you make the intention that you're going to get there, do you know that you writing it down and looking at it every single day, you're seven times more likely to achieve that goal? This is America, ladies and gentlemen. It can happen to you, it can happen for you, but you gotta write these goals down, play them on tablets, so they can be seen by men, and that man and that woman is you. My father said, write your goals down, son, and I wrote them down. I said, Dad, I'm gonna play in the NBA, and I'm a... That's your problem, son. Your value system screwed up. You're smart. This family's about being a student athlete. Rewrite your goals tomorrow and give them to me. He didn't yell at me. He didn't browbeat me. He didn't criticize me. He said, son, that's your problem. Your value system is screwed up. Redo them and give them to me tomorrow. You know, some of you guys can have more in life, but your value system is screwed up. You're more excited about Facebook and Instagram. But some of you guys is golf. You know, I go to work, man, I can't wait to hit that golf course. My father taught me something very valuable. But you know what? You will dwell in what you dwell on. You will dwell in what you dwell on. If you dwell on marijuana, you will dwell in marijuana. And you will get the weed smoker's reward. I thought about it the other day. I'm from Chicago. I've never been to a thug retirement party. Have you? I've never been to a thug retirement party. I guess I have, they're called funerals. What you dwell in, you dwell on. So can I give you a little bit of advice? Make sure your value system is good. Make sure your value system makes sense. People say all the time, well, what's most important to you? God, family, work. And I know what you're gonna write down, but it's gotta be real in your heart, does that make sense? What was in my heart was sports and that's no lie. My father said, redo your value system, son. It's good now. I read it the next day. I said, Dad, you ready? Yeah. Okay, Dad. I'm going to graduate college in four years. I'm going to play an NBA. Anybody know why I ducked? 
My dad had a nice backhand. <laughs> I said, I'm going to play in NBA. And this is what I said. I'm going to make more money in business than I did in sports. You know what my father said? I like it, son. I like it. I want you to take those goals out and look at them every single day. Before I knew it, that 2.1 turned into a 2.9. Before I knew it, I got selected to be president of the journalism club, captain of the homecoming committee. Before I knew it, began, people began to recognize me not as an athlete, but as a leader in school. All of a sudden, I wanted a 3.0. I'm going to get a 3.0. I'm going to get a 3.0. And they were like, Walter, it's mathematically impossible. You know what I'm talking about? So I got as high as I can get, a 2.9. I realized, you know what? I could have had a 3.0 easy if I would have taken advantage and been a little bit more mature in my past life. Some of you guys need to hear what I'm saying to you right now. Some of you guys used to be immature in your past life. Can I get a witness? <laughs> now you're not in middle school anymore. You're not in high school. Childhood is over, would you agree? And grown men and grown women think a certain way, operate a certain way, and have a certain mindset and mentality. I want you to understand you are a part of a legacy. You've heard about your mom's story, you heard about your dad's story, now it's time for you to build your story. My father was a sharecropper in Tennessee. I heard all the stories my dad would tell me being a young black boy in Tennessee. He said, son, I got called the N-word so many times, I began to think it was my first name. But I busted my butt for you, son. I busted my butt. I went back to college for you, son. I got educated for you, son. Everything I do is for you, son. See, right now, I want you to understand you are a part of a legacy. Many of you guys, your mom made sacrifices for you. Your dad made sacrifices for you. Now it's time for you to grab the bull by the horns and impact your legacy. Is everybody with me? Your mom and dad have this story. Your grandfather, your grandmother has his and her story. Now you are building your story. I was at a track meet one day. And I was watching a 4x1 relay. And I love a 4x1 relay because that first sprinter takes off with the baton in their hand and they run as hard as they can, as fast as they can, and when they get to the next athlete, they yell, STICK! And that next athlete takes off running. But they reach back. They just reach back a little bit. And then they run as hard as they can, as fast as they can, for 100 meters, and then they yell, STICK! And it's so important to make a successful handoff because if you don't make a successful handoff, you are disqualified. And the next athlete's turn is to run as hard as you can, as fast as you can, and then they yell, stick! And they hand it to the anchor. That anchor is Carl Lewis. That anchor is Flojo. That anchor is Usain Bolt. And that last hundred meter, whoa! They come around that curve, and all you hear is elbows and form, and they come down and cross that finish line. Oh! I was at this track meet, and I saw them handing this baton. They kept yelling, stick! 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 Your father might be from Russia. Your grandfather might be from Cuba, Colombia. I don't know where they're from, but let me tell you something. At some point, they're going to yell, stick! And that baton's in your hand. So we don't have time to be silly anymore, would you agree? We don't have time to play games anymore, would you agree? You gotta get that baton in your hand, you gotta run as hard as you can, as fast as you can, and every day in that car in the morning, my dad would just talk to me. Like, son, I'm from Tennessee, son. Education is very valuable. You cannot devalue education the way you're, education is important, son. That's the way out, education, working hard, education, getting trained, smart families, a training and development organization is masquerading as a family. Mom, Dad, you are head trainers of a family. You know what my dad would say? Go get it, son. Go get it. Be sweet, baby. Be sweet. Go get it. Go get it. Be sweet, baby. Go get it. Go get it. Be sweet. Be sweet, baby. Go get it. Go get it. Be sweet. Be sweet, baby. Every time I left the house, my mom would say, be sweet, baby. Be sweet. My dad would say, go get it, son. Go get it. Go get it, son. Go get it. Be sweet. 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 My family had two core values. Go get it, son.
Be sweet, baby. I used to go into class and say, man, if I get a C, I'm good. <laughs> if I can pull off a B, C, I'm good. Never even went for that. And you know that the average person thinks the same exact way? They could do more. They could be more if they believe more.